About 12 years ago, on June 10, 2012, Professor George Saituti, the former Kenyan vice president, died in a mysterious helicopter accident. The brand new police helicopter went down shortly after leaving Wilson Airport, south of Nairobi. But long before his mysterious death, the longest serving Kenyan vice president had survived poisoning in February 1990. So, who was after George Setoti's life? In this edition of History Media, we revisit the life story of Professor George Saitoti and the mystery of his death 12 years after. Please come with me. Gabriel here. George Saitoti was born on August 3, 1945 and grew up in Maasai land. Like most other tribal people, his childhood was spent attending school and herding cattle in line with Maasai culture. He attended Olorua Primary School in Kajiado and obtained his basic education certificate in 1950s. From 1960 to 1963, he secured his place at Mangu High School, Tika, where he completed his high school education. Saitoti was one of the recipients of the Kennedy Airlift Scholarship in 1963 when he was 18 years old. Between 1963 and 1967, Saitoti studied at Brandeis University where he obtained a degree in mathematics. During his stay, he received Wien scholarship and specialized in mathematics and economics. Thereafter, he moved to the United Kingdom and completed a master's degree in mathematics at the University of Sussex, Brighton. His desire for more knowledge pushed him to enroll at the University of Warwick for his doctoral studies and receive his PhD in mathematics in 1972. Later in 1988, Saitoti received the inaugural Brandeis Alumni Achievement Award, the highest university honor for its alumni. But don't forget to like this video and subscribe to His Pool Media for more interesting African history stories. You can support our efforts on this channel by buying us a super tanks or joining our channel membership in exchange for exclusive perks. Thank you. After graduating in 1972, Saitoti returned to Kenya and began his career as a mathematics lecturer at the University of Nairobi. By 1983, Saitoti's academic career was on the rise as he became an associate professor and head of mathematics department. Long before joining conventional politics, Saitoti had a stint in legislative duties. From 1974 to 1977, he represented Kenya in the East African community as a member of the East African Legislative Assembly. This was just the beginning for Saitoti. In October 1983, President Daniel Arab Moy nominated Saitoti to the National Assembly and later to his cabinet as Minister of Finance. He held that position until 1989. But during the 1988 general elections, Saitoti entered competitive politics and won the Kajiado North parliamentary seat, previously held by Honorable Philip Odupoi. For over 25 years, since 1988, Professor George Saitoti has represented Kajiado North and was able to win his seat in consecutive elections in 1992, 1997, 2002, and 2007. Building on John King's legacy as a cosmopolitan constituency, Saitoti transformed Kajiado North into Kenya's most ethnically integrated region. The area has provided a safe haven for Kenyans, displaced by the 1991 to 2008 ethnic violence in neighboring areas. The region also ranks among the top 10 wealthiest and fastest growing regions in Kenya. After the 1988 general elections, President Arab Moy appointed Saitoti as Kenya's sixth vice president. He went on to become the longest serving vice president, staying in office for 13 years under President Daniel Arab Moy from 1989 to January 1998, and again from April 1999 to August 2002. At the same time, he also served as Minister of Finance. From 1990 to 1991, Saitoti served as executive chairman of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. He also served as chairman of the African Caribbean and Pacific Group of State from 1999 to 2000. Saitoti's time as vice president demonstrated efficiency, moderation, and loyalty that won the trust of his boss. 
These qualities still made him one of President Waikibaki's trusted cabinet members. Meanwhile, when Saitoti was appointed vice president on May 1, 1989, Kanu was divided over the succession struggle between the seat tied Kanu A and the reformed oriented Kanu B, led by Saitoti. The new vice president was therefore compelled to walk the tightrope between being the face of change in a ruling party and remaining loyal to his principal. But following calls for multi party system of government by Reverend Timothy Njoya in January and the Sabasaba riot in July 1990, President Daniel Arap Moy announced the establishment of the Canon Review Committee with Professor George Saitoti as its chairman. The committee was tasked with investigating electoral and disciplinary practices within the party. In January 1991, the party adopted a recommendation that critics of the party should no longer be expelled but suspended for one to two years. This opened the gates for more reforms and ultimately led to the repealing of Section 2A in 1991, returning the country to multi-party governance. But Saitoti became a target in the political war. Before and after the 1997 elections, Saitoti was in the midst of a troublesome succession storm that rocked Kanu. His Kikuyu family association was amplified in order to weaken his political base and deny him his place as a Maasai elder. Despite his loyalty to Kanu and his boss, he was often ignored, humiliated, and frustrated by his party and its leadership. Consequently, the first attempt on his life took place around the same time that Foreign Minister Robert Oku was murdered in February 1990. We will come back to that shortly. After the 1997 general election, he was removed as vice president, although no successor was appointed. But he will be reappointed in April 1999 on a roadside in Lumuru, Kiambu County. However, those who stood against him could not slumber. Months before the 2002 general elections, Saitoti's name was removed from the list of Kanu delegates and his presidential bid was blocked by unidentified party members. On March 18, 2002, when Kanu held the national delegate meeting at the Kasarani Sports Complex, the move to block Saitoti from the succession contest became clear. At this conference, the party's constitution was amended to allow for the formation of new Kanu by merging Kanu with Raila Odinga's National Development Party NDP. At the same time, four new positions of party vice chairman were created primarily to undermine Saitoti's position as vice president and Moy's likely successor. It was clear that Mr. Moy did not even want him to occupy one of the four vice chairman positions. It was alleged that Mr. Moy had told Saitoti to his face that he was not a presidential material. Consequently, Saitoti gracefully withdrew from the race and lived to fight another day, but not without his famous quote. There come a time when the nation is more important than an individual. However, the marriage between Kanu and the NDP came to a tragic end when Arab Moy named Uhuru Kenyatta rather than Raila Odinga as his successor. Later on, when the NARC Biera Mwai Kibaki decisively defeated Kanu and Uhuru Kenyatta, Saitoti was appointed to the Ministry of Education. He was responsible for the NARC's flagship and globally acclaimed implementation of free primary education in Kenya. After 2004, when the NARC agreement collapsed, Saitoti left the agitating Liberal Democratic Party camp and threw himself into supporting President Kibaki. He campaigned for a government-led draft constitution but was defeated in a referendum in November 2005 by a joint campaign by Kanu and the Liberal Democratic Party. During the 2007 elections, Saitoti defended his Kajado North parliamentary seat on the platform of the National Unity Party, the PNU. On January 8, 2008, he was appointed Minister of State for Internal Security and State Administration in the office of the President, a position previously held by Kibaki's confidant, John Michuki. 
Even after the power sharing agreement between President Kibaki and Prime Minister Raila Odinga to end the 2008 post election violence, Saitoti retained his seat. In July 2009, Saitoti was appointed chairman of a special cabinet subcommittee established to oversee the affairs of the International Criminal Court in Kenya. But when the ICC Chief Prosecutor Moreno Ocampo indicted six prominent Kenyans in 2010 for their role in the 2008 post-election violence, the committee came under serious scrutiny. Meanwhile, on December 19, 2008, President Nwai Kibaki was endorsed as party leader at the PNU National Delegate Conference held at the Kasarani Sports Stadium, while Mr. Saitoti was elected PNU chairman, making him second in the party's hierarchy. His elevation, however, complicated coalition politics and raised the stakes for Kibaki's successor in the PNU. However, an alliance between Kenyatta, Musioka, and Saitoti ahead of the 2013 elections would be abandoned following the political party's half of 2011. Meanwhile, during the height of the Golden Beck scandal between 1991 to 1993, Saitoti served as vice president and finance minister. The scandal became the proverbial sword of Democles, used against Saitoti in power struggle among elite, even though his responsibility in the fraud was never proven. In early 1999, Raila Odinga filed charges against Saitoti for his involvement in the Golden Beck scandal. In February 2006, the commission recommended that Saitoti should face criminal charges. Few days after the commission's recommendation, on February 13, 2006, Saitoti resigned to pave way for investigation. However, on July 31, 2006, a three-judge bench headed by Justice Joseph Nyamu issued a finding order clearing Professor Saitoti of any wrongdoing, removing his name from the Bachelet Committee report and issued a permanent suspension of prosecution order. On November 15, 2006, President Kibaki reappointed Saitoti to his cabinet. In November 2011, Saitoti confirmed that he was participating in a race to succeed President Kibaki, who stepped down after the next general election. Saitoti renewed his candidacy in January 2012 and continued his tour of Kenya, including his visit to the Rift Valley, the Eastern and Central Provinces. Unfortunately, Saitoti could not live to see the next election. On a cold Sunday morning of June 10, 2012, a police helicopter, a Eurocopter AS-350 model carrying Saitoti and his assistant Ora Ojode crashed deep inside Kibiko Forest. The two leaders died alongside two pilots and two bodyguards on their way to Harambi in Ndiwa, Humalpe County. Investigations will later reveal that a crash happened shortly after 9 a.m., just 10 minutes after taking off from Wilson Airport, south of Nairobi. On the controls were Captain Luke Uyuji and Nancy Jitwanja. Twelve years later, questions about what happened on the fateful day still lingers. Various theories have been proposed in an attempt to explain what happened. Despite the formation of a committee of inquiry to investigate the accident, the inquiry directed by then Justice Kalpana Rawal was told that the control tower at Wilson Airport lost contact with the two pilots six minutes after takeoff. However, a report released by the Commission in October 2012 blamed pilot error, bad weather, and the condition of the helicopter battery as some of the possible causes of the crash. The report claimed that the two pilots were not fully experienced to fly in bad weather, while the helicopter battery was not properly maintained and could have caused the fire if it was overcharged. Meanwhile, what caught the attention of Kenyans was the revelation by government forensic pathologist Dorochi Injeru and Amripal Kalsi that Saitoti's body contained significant amount of carbon monoxide poisoning. Injeru told the commission, quote, Examination of all the bodies indicated a cherry pink discoloration of body tissues, which is consistent with carbon monoxide poisoning. The normal color usually takes a darker shade. Interestingly, 
Saitoti had revealed few days before his untimely death that there were plans to assassinate him. In the same vein, just two days to his demise, Saitoti declined to spend a night in a room that was booked for him during an MP's function in Mombasa. He instead opted to book a different room. Meanwhile, Saitoti was expected to present a report on illegal drug trafficking syndicate in the country and had threatened to expose those who were involved in the drug trade in Kenya. Could this have been the reason why he was targeted? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. In another development, fingers have been pointed at Al-Shabaab militant in Somalia. In October 2011, Kenya deployed thousands of troops into southern Somalia to fight the militant group and Saitoti was the first Kenyan official to announce the invasion publicly. Since the Kenyan invasion, also known as Operation Linda in G, the militant group have carried out a series of terror attacks on Kenya soil. Some analysts have therefore blamed his death on Al-Shabaab. However, having declared to run for presidency in the 2013 elections, a few Kenyans believe his death was politically motivated. Those who hold this view may have a valid point because in February 1990, Professor George Saitoti reportedly survived poisoning. He was allegedly poisoned on February 13, 1990 at the exclusive Indian food restaurant at the Mutaiga shopping complex in Nairobi. Even though this was not reported in mainstream media, he would admit this attack when President Moy told a public gathering some years later that those who killed Dr. Robert Oko were the same people who poisoned his vice president. So, what is your thought on this? Let us know what you think in the comments section. Click here for the story of the assassination of Tom Mboya in 1969. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Hispul Media for more interesting African history stories. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.